and welcome. Thanks for joining us. MLB The Show with a good one coming at you. It's the San Diego Padres going up against the Colorado Rockies. And we'll be back with the first pitch right after this. All right, just about set to go. And our pitcher in this game, Herman Marquez. Well, you don't always know what to expect with this guy on the mound to start the game. He can be really good at times and turn in some real excellent efforts. For me, it'll tell us a lot to see how he's attacking the strike zone and pitching aggressively or not. If he's doing that from the jump, I think he'll be fine in this one. And here comes Xander Bogarts. Bounce to the left side. And foul ball. The wind of the pitch. Smoked in the left, base hit. He was all over that one. Put a pretty good jolt into that one. Great swing, nice balance and weight transfer. And he got it to drop in out there in the deep part of the field. A chance now to take the lead. And at this point in the game, that could be a deciding run. Runner in scoring position, no outs. Now the youngster Juan Soto. Here's a high fly ball out to center. One away. That is third. The third base. As we take a look at the Padres lineup. The sluggers in this lineup might not be too happy about the fact that the wind is blowing in today, Chris. Yeah, and you hear pitchers talk about how good it feels when the wind is at their back. And for hitters, you almost feel like beyond just the pitcher coming at you, you've got this other force coming against you. So important to try to get on top of the ball in terms of hitting line drives, you know, maybe really hard ground balls with a good exit velocity that'll get you a base hit because it's very frustrating. You just hit one on the screws, think it's going to go out of the ballpark, and a guy is camped underneath it in front of the warning track. And first offering is fouled off. That one out to right. Blackman brings it in, and that is that. A lot of adrenaline, we can see it right there, and sometimes you just got to let it out. That's an outstanding job of taking that, executing, and getting out of a tough inning. Back here at Coors Field, today's starting pitcher, you Darvish. Anytime you have five pitches to work with on the mound, that repertoire can be a real weapon in terms of keeping hitters off balance, man. It's, it's one of those things that I'm going to be looking for in this one. Does he have a feel for all of those pitches, or is he just able to get one or two over in the strike zone where he wants? Now, it's tough to do to be able to command all those pitches, but if he can, he is going to be very tough for the opponent today. Bottom of the first, Jonathan Daza steps to the plate. And a foul ball. Chris, you Darvish debuted with the Rangers back in 2012. It's been a pretty successful big league career. He's been an all-star multiple times and a guy with all those pitches. He gives Pitchcom a run for its money, I think you'd say. Soto settles under it and makes the catch. And there's one down. Take a look at the lineup. They're facing a guy today who is a strike thrower. Doesn't issue a lot of walks, so they're going to have to work hard to generate base runners. And when you've got a strike thrower like this guy on the mound, you can't be overly patient as a hitter because the umpire is generally going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And there's a base hit to the left. Around first, heading for two. The throw into second, and he starts his afternoon off right with a double. Man, those are the types of hits where you don't feel any vibration in your hands whatsoever. Such a good feeling. A well-deserved double on a great swing. Got everything going on time. He stayed balanced and he squared it up about as well as you could possibly ask. Now a huge at-bat in this game coming up. 
Ryan McMahon steps to the plate. In the air, right center field. This is demolished. Way back and gone. Ryan McMahon leads the yard. The Rockies score first. It's 2-0. That was blasted. Absolutely no doubt off the bat. Let's break out the stat cast numbers. It's singing. It tells us this home run was projected at more than 450 feet. Yeah, and not many players can hit home runs as far as this one. That's a special feeling, and I'm sure he was giggling a little bit as he was jogging around the bases. That was one heck of a swing he put on the baseball. And here is C.J. Crone on the ground to the left. Whips it across. Oh. Crone retired. It's a good recovery, not though, after hit. giving up the home no run. Right not allowing Charlie it to Lee. stay in the head, but Black going to work right. at the next hitter, and a tough one at that. Here's Charlie Blackman. Yeah, I remember when he came into the league and talking about seven, eight pitches that this guy had, and wow, you're just scratching your head if you're a hitter. What do you look for? And that one hit to first. He steps on the bag, and that is the inning. But the Rocks bring in two on this big fly. It's now a 2-0 ball game. Major League Baseball is on the show. Back here in Denver, now it's the DH, Nelson Cruz. Nelson. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. In the air, left field. And that one hops the wall. But now they hold him to a single. Doesn't have plus speed, so I guess they didn't want to try and stretch that, it there. That play looks routine defensively, but with all of the little looks, it can get real tricky down in the corner. Kept it to a long single. Nice defensive play. Now it's Matt Carpenter. Ground ball could be two. Goes to second. Safe there. Sung Kim, the next up for the Padres. And that one ripped to left. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's one away. Two on, one out. Now it's Trent Grisham to the plate. Definitely wants to stay out of the double play here. Ball on the ground in the infield. Should be an inning-ending double play. Swing and a high fly ball to left. Hauls it in for the out. This lineup's going to have to find a way to make him work a little harder out there on the mound. I mean, he is just mowing them down. He's settling in. you got to make him uncomfortable. Maybe step out of the box, call timeout, do whatever it takes. And now it's Austin Nola. And first offering is fouled off. Pretty good pitch there to take a rip at. He wants to get his arms extended. He likes the ball away from him a little bit, just not able to square it up. Base hit right field. Runner around third on his way to the plate. One runs in, and the tying runs at second base with a double. The run scores all the way from first. We are tied at two. Well, there you go, the RBI machine. Another clutch run scoring at bat. Yeah, he's been so good in these situations. Call it clutch if you want, but his resume speaks for itself. It's Xander Bogarts now. Doubled his first time up. 
Line drive, base hit. And it gets by him. Throw quickly to the infield, and the go-ahead run has to hold up at third with two away. Well, that's a smart decision to hold up with one out and the heart of the order coming up. Don't want to run into it out at home plate. Juan Soto now. 0 for 1 with a fly out. Center field. That one's back. And that one finds the forest. It's out of here. with that high fastball to look how his bat stays in the zone for a long time absolutely crushed that pitch here's Manny Machado now he's 0 for 1 tap softly third base side a swinging bunt fires over to Crone that's out number three so a three run shot for the Padres here it's 5-2 you're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show We head to the bottom of the second, and now the DH, Sean Bouchard. Darvish, who's played for the Rangers, Dodgers, Cubs, and Padres, but he's been an all-star in both leagues, Singy. An all-star and a fan favorite is really becoming... A and it gets by him! That is tough. And now it's Elias Diaz. Into center. Grisham settles under it. Can't get there, and now maybe extra bases. Around second on his way to third. Throw comes in, runner stop, second and third, nobody out. Well, clearly he was ready to hit right there. Just a very nice approach and swing right there to use the big part of the field. Everything was on time. He stayed balanced through the entire swing and just launched that one in the center. And you can feel this crowd waking up a bit here as the guys are starting to make some noise with their bats. So up next, Ezekiel Tovar. In the air, out towards left center, base hit, and a run in to score. Runner stops at third, and they're at the corners with nobody out. Stringing them together, that's three hits in a row. That ball right there landed in what they call the no-man's land, meaning it's not really a spot on the field where you can expect anyone to get to it easily. I mean, it's a tough play going back for the shortstop, but also for the outfielders trying to come in. they got to go a long way as well. Next to hit, Alan Trejo. Swing and a ball lifted left field. Drops into the glove. Runner tags for home. He'll score on the sack fly. And now they trail by one. Well, that's a quality at bat right there. You know the situation. You need something in the air and deep enough. And that's exactly what he did. Good pass to the baseball. So the Rockies lineup turns over. Here's the center fielder, Yonathan Daza. Fly to left his first time up. Out towards right center field. Carpenter gets there. He's under it. Could be extra bases. Here's the throw. He's in at second with a one-out double. You know, I was watching his rounds during batting practice today. So impressed with his ability to let the ball travel, go back up the middle and the other way. Sometimes when you step in the box during the game, you get a little anxious and you get away from that. But so far, I've seen him stay consistent with his pregame preparation. So two.
two in scoring position with one out. Here's Chris Bryant now. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Still only one out here in the inning. This one smacked out to left center. And it's into the bleachers. Out of here. Chris Bryant pops one out of here. And they take the lead. It's 7-5. Exactly the pitch he was looking for, crushes it and hits it out of the ballpark. So one out, nobody on. Ryan McMahon digging in for the Rockies. That one pulled foul. Part of the order coming through now, and with one home run already in this inning, they're definitely looking to do some more damage. One down, base is empty. Strike two. James Kingsley, our plate umpire, consistent and maybe a little generous on the edges. Yeah, Boog, he'll give a little bit on the edges, like you said, but from what I've seen, he usually does that when a guy is just commanding those parts of the strike zone, and essentially the guy's earned it. The umpire rolls with him. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. And there's two away. Next to hit for the Rockies, C.J. Crow. Rounded out his first time up. On the ground to third. In plenty of time to first. And that will end the inning. Rockies get three on this homer. And it's 7-5. It's Major League Baseball on the show. All set for the start of the inning. Leading off, Jake Cronenworth. Number nine, Jake Marquez, a former All-Star, 28 years old. And he was born in Venezuela. That one pushed foul. Some of the greatest players in the history of the game were born in Venezuela, including one that finished with 500-plus home runs, 3,000-plus hits, and a triple crown. Puts it in the air out towards left center. And it hops over the wall for an automatic double. Well, that's how you respond. Leadoff man comes up, gets into scoring position. Now, there are several ways that they can get this run across. Runner in scoring position, no outs. Next for the Padres, Nelson Cruz. Lifted in the air, right field. Blackman puts it away, and there's one down. Oh, caught up in a rundown now. Cronenworth around second, headed for third. Not in time. He's safe. So digging in now for San Diego, Matt Carpenter. In the infield at the corners, don't be surprised to see them come home first and prevent that run from scoring. One away with a runner at third. That one pushed foul out of play off to the left. Here's the 0-2. And that one is lifted in the air. Blackman settles underneath it. Two away. He scores on the sack fly, and they trail by one. Well, those can be pretty fun as an outfielder. Got to put it into his highest gear and go a long way to track that one down. Nothing better than that. You feel like a wide receiver playing football. And it falls. So a two-out knock keeps the inning alive. 
went up there looking to be aggressive and got something he could handle. You know what they say, he couldn't have thrown it out there any better than that, and certainly the case that time, just flared it back behind the second baseman and dropped it in there. Now, Trent Grisham. Line drive, base hit. Makes the turn at second, heads for third. And it gets by him. Around third. He'll score and they've tied it. It's 7-7. Nice line drive to the pull side. Met it out front, but just stayed through it nice enough and ripped it into the outfield. Had a huge opportunity now to grab the lead at this point in the game. Runner at third, two men out. And now the catcher comes up to him. Austin Nola swings through that one. Oh, one one. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't see a visit from the pitching coach here. Just to remind him, focus on the hitter. Don't worry about anything else. Here's your one. That's ripped into the outfield. Brings it in, and that is the inning. They get two runs on three hits, no errors, and one left. We move on to the bottom of inning number three. And we are tied 7-7. And welcome back. Now it's Charlie Blackman. Darvish back to work. And first offering is fouled off. Left-hand batter waits. Pulls that one foul. And he'll two. And a swing and a miss. And one gone. Well, there's no shorting up with two strikes right there. I mean, it looked to me like he had one thing on his mind, and that was trying to end this ball game. Well, it's kind of surprising since he was leading off this inning, but... When you look at the long ball and how often it's relied upon in terms of scoring runs, being able to win ball games, I guess I'm not so surprised with the way he went after that with two strikes. That one down the line, into the outfield, base hit. And now the winning run is on base. And he'll pull into second safely. There you go, winning run is aboard with one down. He kind of rolled over on this pitch a little bit, but he got enough behind it to shoot it through for a knock, and we'll take that anytime you can get him to find a hole. Winning run in scoring position now, so a clutch A-B could end this one. One out, runner at second. Here's the catcher, Elias Diaz. Out to short, Bogarts handles the chance. To first, and he beats it, everyone's safe. Well, a big swing of the bat right there. That pretty much split the zone down the middle, and those are the ones where you got to make them pay. So in now for Colorado, Ezekiel Tovar. And a foul ball left side. Righty delivers. Line drive. That's a base hit. Bouchard rounds third, headed for the plate. Across is the winning run, and the Rockies walk it off, eight to seven. Well, you come to the ballpark hoping you'll see something special that day, whether you're a player or a fan. A walk-off win, nobody forgets that. A memorable moment that'll be logged in the backs of the minds of everybody that witnessed this here today. And a final. Eight to seven for Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show. I'm John Chambi. Thanks for joining us.
The final line score for the ball game this afternoon. For the victorious Rockies, eight runs, ten hits, one error. They left no runners on base.